that that type of energy system is really aerobic or oxidative. And what you really want to work on is glycolytic. So kind of targeting the wrong energy system there. It's not really going to transfer over, but that's, that's okay. So you're sitting in second position here on the rail. That's very common for unofficial or like, you know, not big races where you're going to have a holder for each one. Yeah. So we'll just do this. You know what? Let's just watch the whole thing through um, and just have you narrate to me like you're explaining tactics to me. Um, I know that sounds like such a dumb exercise and I always hated <laughs> no, it I when didn't. it was done to okay. me, but it helps to see like in the moment, like wh what your relationship is with tactics and the track and how I the physics completely of racing understand. works. All right. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's talk about this. We're going to stop at uh, different places. Kind of talk, talk me through what you're looking at. Um, so, right at the beginning, what are you thinking? I'm kind of thinking, all right, I want to use my arm right here, slingshot myself forward a little bit. So my mm -hmm. legs don't got to work too hard. And then I'm just going to try to draft behind him and see, see what he does. And, um, you know, okay, so let's let's pause there for a second. So you want to draft behind him, see what he does. We're yeah. gonna let me scroll through this. We're gonna pull off. Okay, cool. So right now you're drafting behind him. Uh, yes, it's no? not really a draft, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was that's things. something I wanted to mention is if your plan is to stay behind him and draft, the draft is increasingly beneficial the faster the lead rider is going. So when we're going slow, we're not so, really getting a draft. Yeah. So well, what is the point of being behind him at this point? Uh, no point really, but I kind of knew I was faster than him. So I figured, all right, I'm going to look for my window. And if, you know, initially at the time, my idea was drafting. But when I, as soon as I looked back at the film and I saw how slow we were going, I was like, that was a terrible idea. Um, I'm just going to start off by saying this is a very weak position because he is in the middle of the track. It's very unique to these outdoor tracks that you're able to ride that slow in the middle of the track. On a wooden track, you would slip off going this slow. Um, yeah. So that's why you see a lot of riders drop to the bottom of the track. Um, the other thing to note is that the track, just because of the way the circle works, the perimeter is bigger than the inside, right? Yeah. So if you were to ride around at the top of the track, you would go more distance than at the bottom. Correct. Uh, also, the ups and downs, the profile of the track is more pronounced at the top than at the bottom so if you're at the top you're going to be climbing up all of those inclines at the bottom you're basically going flat and a shorter distance so already we're going a further distance around this track it's a third 333 but we might be doing 353 i just made that up but you know it's we're already going further distance and this lead rider is leaving you the option to go above him or below him so you have two options to pass him. Going above him would mean going further, slower, uphill. Going below him would mean you can travel less distance. If you rode underneath him, you would be traveling downhill, less distance, very easy to get past him. Now let's pretend that he's actually on the pole lane. He's in the sprinter's lane. We have rules in track on the velodrome that you cannot pass on the blue. So if you're riding on the pole lane, the only option to pass is above. The only legal way to pass is above. Yeah. So if you lead it out in the pole lane, or if he leads it out in the pole lane, your only option is to go around him up track, which means not only are you traveling more distance, but you're probably going to get slowed down by going uphill. So that's why it's always a good idea to lead from the bottom of the track for a couple other reasons. One, so you don't slip off a wooden track. Two, so that if they do attack you, they have to go over you. So you're not looking right, left, right, left. You know, if they're coming, they're coming to the right. Um, so that's why we like to lead from the bottom of the track. It gives the person behind you less options. In any position, your goal is to control the race. We want to be proactive, not reactive. So you want to be that chess player that's making a move to force someone else to move. You don't want to be that chess player that's like, oh, crap, I'm in check. Let me move out of it. Oh, crap, I'm in check. Let me move out of it. Again, you want to be the one always forcing their move, whether they know it or not. So you want to be in control of the race. So that's really all. That's really the main topic for today is we're going to be simple. 
quick and dirty, nothing too fancy. We're just going to control the race. Um, <clears throat> so right now, he's controlling you. He's setting the pace and you're just following him. Nothing you're doing is changing what he's doing. Does that make sense? Correct. Which means that he's leading the race. It'd be very easy for you to lead the race. If you just dropped underneath him, probably wouldn't have to pedal any harder. If you just turned your wheel down and went to the bottom of the track, you would take the lead just because of gravity. And yeah. now he would have to react to you. He'd say, wow, now I'm in second place. What am I going to do? So just, just an aside. Okay. So we're here. You're staying behind him. And this is very common for beginning tactics is the idea of I have to stay behind until it's time to sprint. And then yep. I sprint. Yep. Uh, so here we go. He kind of chops up this track. Sometimes we call this scrubbing because you'll notice that he slows down. Going up track, that's going to slow you down. This would have been an easy opportunity. I don't know what he's Still doing. Right there. I don't know what he's doing, but that's what I would do if I wanted you to take the lead. I mean, I'd ride around in the middle of the track if I wanted you to take the lead because I would have expected you to do it already. Um, but him chopping up here, you know, he slowed himself down and look at how you're already overlapping him. Yep. This is a great opportunity for you can just stay there. And now he's stuck outside of you up at the top of the rail. We call that holding someone on the hip, right? You just block their way back down to the bottom. Or his bike is pointing. If we go right back here, it's pointing diagonally straight up towards those trees. His bike is facing the wrong direction. The harder direction. Imagine doing a, you know, a time trial going straight up at that direction. You'd run into the rail and, it, yep. you know, going the wrong way. If you just point your bike the right direction, all of a sudden in the two, three seconds, you're going to have a 30, 40 meter gap. Because what he has to do is he needs to accelerate, change the direction of his bike, come back down track. You know, that's going to be, that's a big, that's something you, you don't want to do. You don't right. ever want to chop up track like this unless you're going really, really fast. You'll see some of the professionals on the velodrome try and manage the distance between themselves and the other rider by swinging up track and coming right back down. They're doing that at 35, 40 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, you never chop up track unless you're already going almost all out and you would power up and continue powering back down. Yeah. It yeah. seems like he just kind of coasted up, which means you're going to have that moment where you stall. So we'll learn from his mistakes. And also this is maybe a great opportunity for what you were looking for. And it happens, up, oh, stay behind him. He straightens out. It happens. He stays up here again. He kind of chops right up to the rail. Yep. Um, this would be a great opportunity. I'm not a fan of beginners. I don't want to call you a beginner, but beginning in terms of tactics. Like, you know, how yep. many years have you been doing tactics? Yeah. I'm not a fan of people in the beginning of their race career holding each other to the rail. It's harder than you would think. If you're not comfortable riding super close and you're not a little bit overlapping, you want your front wheel, you know, maybe halfway, you know, okay. your back wheel is even with his pedals. That's about the overlap that you want to control them at the rail. If you can't judge that perfectly and you falter for a second, they might still get out and then you're stuck up at the rail. So I think this is better to just save it for later. It would be better here. He's above you. Dive down the track. Yeah. Dive down the track. So now we're back behind him again, still leading you because he's picking the pace and you're Follow. agreeing to it. Yep. We're still above that blue lane. We're up at the rail. So now the only option for you to attack is down track, which coincidentally is the shortest and fastest way around the track. So he's giving you one option and it's the best option. We're here, we're here. We're just kind of like zigzagging up and down the track. I'm not 100% sure what his goal is. He lets you over the top or you go over the top, which is fine. It, you can, I knew I was faster than him already. Yeah. So, you know. um, but think about, let's think about like a championship. You're yeah, going to have I'm, to, after you qualify, it depends on how many rounds there are, but you're going to have to do like one sixteenths. Then you're going to have to do one eighth rounds. Then you're going to have to do, you know, quarterfinals and quarterfinals can sometimes be depending on how big the competition is best out of three. Then you're going to go to semis best out of three. Then you're going to go to finals. So that's a lot of racing and you've already done a flying 200 and it might be in a weekend where you're also going to be doing a kilo and a team sprint and a 500 and a whatever. Um, so you want to save the most energy possible. 
you don't want to be doing the most. You want to be doing the least and have the most left over. Um, so you go over the top, which is fine, except that the hole underneath was free and it would have just been faster and easier to go underneath. Okay. So you're over, it's just clear that you are faster. You have hard from this angle to see, but you've already cleared his front wheel. We got to come down and take that pole lane. You got to come down and take the sprinter's lane. The same reason why, the same reason why I said it, you want to lead out from the pole lane. It's the reason why you want to capture the pole lane. So nobody can pass under you. They can only pass over you. There are, there are more rules regarding the sprinter's lane than anywhere else. So you want to get into that sprinter's lane. And what happens is because you don't, even though you're faster, he gets underneath you again. So now you're riding above the red line, which is longer, farther, and harder. So even though you're faster, you could have saved all that energy by just being on the black line all the way back here when you probably started to pass him. And then yeah. we come all the way through. You could have taken the lane. He gets underneath you because he has the shorter, faster way. Eventually, you just come on top of him because you're faster. Here we go. Here we go. Do, 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 do. You're just faster. You just blow him out of the water. And you just time trial all the way to the end. Let's talk about this ending. We want to, one of the skills we want to be able to practice is being able to ride looking over your shoulder the whole time. Once you get, this is a pretty big gap. Let's just say you could fit 10 bikes in between that about. That's pretty big. Um, and you can see that you're pulling away. I would meter my effort so that I finished as close to him as possible while still winning. You know, the, the more experienced you are, the closer you can finish. You know, there are ex really experienced riders like Aner's Kicksix, who, you know, wins worlds every year. Um, and he'll finish like this. He'll beat you by half a wheel, even though he is one of the fastest guys, masters racers in the world. Um, so, he'll beat you just like this, just by a wheel because he's so attuned and he's so good at, you know, observation that he knows where you are. He knows how hard he has to go. Very experienced decades. Um, so for you, you know, maybe finishing something like this, something like this, this kind of a gap might be more comfortable, but we end up beating him by, you know, quarter well, of a lap enough, which just means way more energy, you know, save your energy for the next race. Just, it's a good skill to practice. Plus, it's always nice to your weaker competitors. You don't want them to feel so defeated because they'll never want to race you again. It's a good skill for you to practice for your own development, and it always makes racing a better environment. Nobody wants to get, quote, unquote, keloed, which is when, like, someone just goes from the gun, and they just get so left behind that they're just blown out of the water. They're defeated. They feel bad about themselves. Um, so it's a little bit of sportsmanship, but mostly it's just – for, you know, like if it's state championships, do it not for sportsmanship, but for conserving energy yeah. and for tactical awareness, being able to observe. If you can't observe the gap at the finish, you won't be able to observe those distances in the middle of the race. Um, so just really quickly to recap, let's look through this. When you push off the rail, you follow right as he goes. You could have given him, read his body language. Does it look like he's gonna go all out from the gun? If no. so, be ready to slingshot yourself. If he's not going to go right from the gun, you can give him a second. One Mississippi. See where he goes. Does he go straight down the track? If not, maybe you can give him a second. See if he's noticing you. And then you could dive right under him right at the beginning. Or you can just start to observe where is he looking? Is he looking back? Does he not? Does he always look left, right, forward, left, right, forward? When he looks left, you go right. <laughs> you know, just give yourself a little bit of distance tendencies exactly we'll talk a little bit more about rushing the gap when it comes up that didn't really even happen um but why you would want to manage a gap and keep a distance between you and the lead rider um you don't want to draft right on them you want to actually leave a gap maybe that'll come up on our next video um so we have guy in the back we have you in the front notice how far back he is sitting right he's already created that gap for himself Whereas you were right up on that rider's wheel, he's giving himself that gap already. He's already thinking ahead to managing the gap. So a little bit of forethought, he's going to be able to look and see what you're doing and notice kind of like what you're going to do right off the gun. Okay, so we pull off. Notice he 
kind of just like hangs around for a little bit, puts his hand on the bars. I mean, he's so far away. He's not even in frame. It's harder to know where you are. You're going to have to really look over your shoulder here to see where he is. So better job leading out because you kind of get right down the track, right? You kind of get down here to this red line, which is good. There's no way for him to fit in that sprinter's lane underneath you um, because you're still technically in that lane. So, and even if he did come down, it'll take a little flick of the wheel for you to be fully in the lane and legally or technically you would, you would command the lane. So if he went underneath you, it would be illegal. So um, already off the bat, I haven't pre-watched this really, so I don't know. Um, already you're leading this better. So let's just play this through. Maybe tell me what you were thinking. And right. So I'm in front and my, what I'm trying to do is like you said, block him so that he can't go under me and his only way is around. But okay. in my head, looking back, I was also in my head. I was also, I, I know he's a little bit faster than me. Um, so I was, and much more experienced. So I was trying to create a little bit of a distance. So, so we could, talk about, um, controlling the race. Yeah. How does someone from the back control the race? When you're in the front, you want the race to be as slow as possible while still being safe. Because when you're in the front, you're doing most of the work. So the slower you get, the less draft there is for someone behind you, right? They don't get the benefit. If you start going all out, it's very hard for you and the person behind you can sit in the draft if they're within that distance. Um, couple bike lengths, they'll still get a good draft and they'll be sitting behind you, saving energy while you're in the front, losing energy. When you're yeah. on the front, if you start going all out, your energy will start decreasing little by little while the person drafting is saving energy. And there comes an inflection point where they will have more than you do. And hopefully that comes for them before the end of the race. So when you're in the front of the race, you want to keep it close. You don't want them to have a gap because that gap is something they can rush. They're going to rush through this pocket of negative resistance and it can suck you through. And, um, that's going to be really beneficial for them instead of, you know, think about being inside of the car on a windy day and you stick your head out the window and all of a sudden, or you stick your hand out and it goes, Phew. yeah, that's yeah. what happens when you're inside of a draft right on someone's wheel. And then you pop out into the wind. All of a sudden it's like a parachute. So it's much better if you rush through their draft and kind of slice through the middle. We don't need to get into too much of the physics of how that works, but it's better to rush through the gap than it is to sit on the wheel and pop outside. So that's why the guy in the back wants a gap. He wants space. So if there's not enough space, there are ways for him to control you in the front. He can scare you. If someone gets scared, they'll speed up. So if someone's afraid of being passed, sometimes they'll speed up. So ways that he can scare you to speed up, other than just you know his reputation, would be he starts to get out of the saddle. Or you see him start going up around the track, kind of out of the saddle, so it looks like he's going to start sprinting and attack you. You might speed up. You'll say, well, he's going to come around me. Let me speed up to keep him at bay. He, you've just done what he wanted. He wanted you to speed up. Now all he has to do is drift back down and settle in at the right distance that he was looking for. He drove you to speed up. Yeah. So there are ways to, to create a gap, to drive someone on, to push them on. Um, meanwhile, in the front, you want to keep it close and you want to keep it slow so that you do not waste any energy. So that way you're both relatively fresh. We'll talk a little bit more about leading from the front, but let's just go from the back here. Um, here we go. He's going up the track to see if he can push you on a little bit, create a little bit of tension with you. Um, you are speeding up a little bit and you're getting out of the lane. He's right up at that rail. He comes back down. We're both above. Now you're way out of that pole lane, giving him both options above and below. He's maintaining a good gap. You'll notice this gap is exactly the same as he's maintained from the beginning. And you're right here on the stairs line, on this blue lane in the middle. He has options above and below you. And here we go. Yep, I should have dropped. Yeah, you know what? The fact that he's up here right behind you, all the way up here, also. He's trying to catch my draft. Hmm. I mean, that might be what he's trying is he should have just turned straight down the track. Yeah. Cause he would have just had a, a he would have turned, he should have turned straight down the track. So just because someone wins doesn't necessarily mean that they have good tactics or right. no, you know, I don't want to say don't know what they're doing, but didn't do something well. Um, 
plenty of options if he decided I don't want to take the front too soon. Um, that's fine, but there's only three quarters of a lap left. If you're not going to take it now, when? Most of the danger usually comes. I thought he was going to come out of this turn. A lot of the danger comes coming out of a turn. Because when you come out of a turn, the track flattens out in the straights. So there's less of a penalty coming above, above them. So coming out of turn four right here with one lap to go or, you know, like a lap and a quarter. Drop down. Danger area. That's a danger area. Yeah. You should be you should be in the you should be protecting that pole lane already if you're in the front. Black lane. And you should be planning to try and attack right here. Either with, you know, this like one lap to go, sometimes back here, coming out of turn two. So coming out of the turns into the straights with about a lap and a half to go, that's also a, a common time to attack. So that you take the lead going into the final lap. It's a little bit risky doing that with half a lap to go, but it happens. So He's up here following you for who knows what reason. He should have just turned down track. You're looking to your right, not to your left. So if he had just sw like popped down track, he could have taken the lead with very little effort. So here we go. He should have gone down track, but he didn't. We're just, again, in no man's land in the middle of this track. And here we go. Oh, there we go. Half a lap to go coming out of that turn. This is where a lot of moves will happen is coming out of either turn two or turn four because you're going into the straights. So going into the straight, he's just going to come over you. Is he going over you or yep. under you? Yeah, he's going over. over you. We come through here again. Why did he decide to go over you with half a lap to go instead of just going under you with three quarters of a lap to go and working much easier? I don't have that answer. Who knows? Um, I mean, he did win. Look at how far apart he is, though. He's above that blue line. There is no rule about how far away you have to be from the person in the pole lane other than don't impede their progress. He should be on the blue stairs line, if not inside of it, because he's traveling further distance. It's just... You know, you want to be as close as possible. You don't need to be all the way up there. So let's just go back to the beginning and see if there's anything we can recap here. He gives you a little bit of a gap from the beginning, and he maintains this gap all the way throughout. You started off on the pole lane, which is great, but we eventually start drifting up. And I would like to say that he was controlling the race by coming up here and pushing you on. Look at this gap. You did feel you had a sense, whether it was preconceived or from the race, that he was a little faster than you. So whether it was because what you know of him from training or because in the race you felt the pressure, there's this nice big gap that opens up, which is still manageable for him to close. So he has controlled you or he's pressured you into going faster than maybe would be prudent, right? That is correct. Um, that's what happens when someone's up high, they are a threat because they could come right down the track at us. So you speed up to try and neutralize that threat. Then he comes down and manages this gap. That's a great way to control the race. So he's pretty much controlled you up to this point. But then this gap is maintained. Nothing he's doing is really changing what you're doing. He's following you at this gap in the middle of the track, which means now you're controlling this race. Whether you know it or not, you're setting the pace. And he's saying, I'll let Mike go this pace and I'll just hold my distance back here. So right now you're controlling this race when he should be trying to control this race. Um, if you were really in control and you were trying to maneuver him tactically, you would try and find a way to lure him in a little bit closer. The closer, keep your enemies close when you're in the front. Give your energy a little bit too. The closer he is, the less likely he is going to be able to get a big rush on your gap and come by you with a bigger speed differential. So especially when you're in front, you, you should be very comfortable with someone being close to you. That should be your You want them to be close. In the front, you need to be so good at, observation because you need to be able to hear sense smell them coming um so when they're really close to you and you know that they're about to try and attack over the top or they're going to try and pull beside you or they're going to go up the track like you know they're going to try and do a running effort and just run at you you respond to that because you were looking at them the whole time with good track racers there is no surprise you know with someone that's inexperienced you can surprise them because when they're looking forwards they'll attack Right. And then it's a surprise. But if you can look at them the whole time, they're not going to be able to surprise you. They're going to have to maneuver you like a chess piece. So if you're in the front, you want to keep them close and observe them. So when they start accelerating, 
You saw it, you accelerate with them. When they slow down, you slow down with them. If you don't slow down with them, you're working harder while they're resting and they get a little bit of a gap, which could be to their benefit in the future. So you wanna keep them close, you wanna keep them low, off the rail, you wanna keep them low and close, right? Uh, Cause when they're on the rail, they are a little bit of a threat. They, it's like doing a flying 200 right over you. They'll go, they will go faster than you. Um, so if he's up there, should I be a little closer to him, but also get up? No, no. Him? When he goes up, it is true that when he goes up, he's trying to push you on. You have to make sure that you go a little bit faster than he's comfortable with. So you start picking it up because if he stayed up there the whole race, he would eventually get dropped. For him to match your pace up top to you down bottom Way could be five point. miles an hour difference. Yeah, That'd be exhausting for him. So you want to pick up the pace just enough that he comes down track. Cause at a certain point he's like, Oh, he's going too fast for me to stay up here. Let me come down track. When he comes back down track, there's no need for you to be going that fast anymore. So that's when you start feathering it back. And then you start to observe him. Is he going to go back up the track to try and push me on again? Or is he just going to try and catch up to me down here? And as soon as he's closing in on you up here, it's like merging on the highway. You try and match that speed. You throttle that clutch nice and easy. So the gears match. And you match that speed so that when he catches up to you, he's not going faster than you. And you guys meet at a nice, even speed. If he goes back up the track to threaten you, you push on just fast enough, not aggressively and out of nowhere, but you push on just fast enough that he feels the pressure to come back down. When he comes back down, you can slow back down. Yeah. That's the first half of the race. The second half of the race in front is that same idea, but with each passing meter there's a little bit of a higher required speed so if you're doing that at a slow to moderate speed in the beginning that works a little bit of tactical awareness the closer you get to the end of the race the faster your base speed is going to be so coming into a lap and a quarter to go so you're coming in like through the home straight for the first time before you do your one last lap you're going to want to be at least going 75 80 percent effort not all out but you want to be going 75, 80% effort because the faster you're going, the harder you are to pass. If you go too fast too soon, though, you'll tire out and then he'll pass you. So that's why you want to be going 70, 80%. And then when you get into turn one and two, you're going probably 80, 85%. And then when you exit turn two, I'd probably go 100% all the way to the end. You know, because at that point, it's just a half a lap. It's a hundred meter effort. You can go all out at that point. Um, remember to be cautious of attacks coming out of turn four and out of turn two. So on those home straights with either one lap to go or half a lap to go, especially on this track, half a lap to go or one lap to go, coming out of turn four or turn two, that's where you're going to want to be really observing where is the attack coming from because it's probably going to happen in a straight. It rarely happens successfully in a turn with good racing. So where is the attack coming and how can I go just fast enough to hold it at bay? but not so fast that I tire myself out before the end. So that's really our tactic from the, from the front. Um, learning from his mistakes, you know, coming into a turn is a great place to attack right here. If he had just cut you down right here, he would have taken that lane. And before you could even react, it's very easy to get underneath someone and take that lane um, before they can react because they have to turn their bike and kind of accelerate. There's this moment of stalling when they try and do a sharp turn down track, um, especially at the speed you're going. If he had just turned down track, he would have gotten there first. And he would have had control of this lane. And then he could decide, do I want to go all out from the lane or do I want to feather it? And now he's in the front and he does the exact same tactic we were talking about. He takes the front. We have one lap to go. He'd probably be doing like 75, 80% right about here. Probably be doing something like 85, 90 as you exit this turn probably right about here, this 200 meter line, boom, 100% all the way to the end, 200 meters from the end, maybe even 95%, 95%. And if you see them coming up around this corner, 100% because it's very hard to pass the return. He's an experienced racer, but he's not racing a bunch of people with a ton of experience or that use good tactics. So he's not forced to use, you know, elite tactics all the time. He's, you know, he's able to just not come under you here and just let you lead this race. And with half a lap to go, 
you know, didn't even really rush this gap. He just kind of casually came behind you and then passed you. If I was going to do this, if I was going to pass you here, I'd hopefully have a little bit more gap here. I'd be up at the rail going 100% right here if I was in back. I'd be going 100% and as we came out of this, I would rush through here like a flying 200 and you would never see me again. Yeah. But he just casually, he has this height, well, he had some height advantage up here. He's above you, got a little bit of a gap. It's a little too close. And then he just casually follows you down the track and then passes you not going all too fast. And then we're side by side going through a turn. Oh, it camera turns quickly, but side by side going through a turn, which means he's going further. It's really hard to pass through a turn like that. You want to make that pass before the turn because you want to be in front so that if someone's going to pass you, they have to pass the return because turns are very hard to pass through because you're going further uphill. It's steeper. It's more distance. It'll slow you down. So he's going further, slower, harder through a turn, exiting wide and still beats you, which he could have accomplished that with a lot less effort. And you could have led from the front in a way that didn't give him that benefit. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him sometime. After he beat me that day, and I just told him, I'm like, I'm going to get you one day. Yeah. One day. And you just have to make sure that you understand how to control the race. When am I being controlled? If you notice, just ask yourself, am I being controlled or am I in control? And like, be honest. Like, am I, am I in control? And if, they, if you think you're in control, you know, then say to yourself, you'll see this sometimes people swinging up and down the track, they're doing all these crazy things. And then you ask yourself, is that changing what the other person is doing? Sometimes there's one person in particular, he will touch every inch of the track. He's like swinging up, swinging down all over the place. Um, but the other person doesn't move. They don't react, which means no matter what you're doing, you're not controlling the race. You only control the race when what you do changes what the other person's doing. So that's one thing. So if you think you're in control, ask yourself, what did I do that he reacted to? Am I in control? Either in the front or in the back. If you're in the front and you speed up and they come down track, you controlled it. You made him come down track. If you're in the back and you go up track and it makes them speed up, you're in control. So it's that power. It's that play for power. So once you understand how to control the race or how to just control how the other person reacts, then you can play the race. There will be times when you're doing something, um, you know, let's just say you're playing a game and the other person doesn't know all the rules, whatever it is. You might do something that is tactically and textbook a good move. You might go up track in order to make them speed up, but they don't speed up. And that could be because maybe they don't know what they're doing. They don't understand that being higher on the track is a little bit more dangerous in this scenario. So if that's the case, if they're not reacting to something you're doing that is legitimately good, then that's a clue for you. They don't know when to react. So they don't know that I'm pushing them on, which means that they don't know that I'm a threat right now, which means it's going to be very easy for you to take the lead. Does that make sense? Yeah. You just want to make sure that you use the right tools to accomplish what you are thinking. You want to put the pressure on, make sure you're putting the pressure on with the right tactical context instead of just let me ride fast to put his pressure on because that could actually not be putting the pressure on it could be setting him up for a good gap rush right yeah. so when you're in the back what's the most important thing when you're in the back this get is what up. we'll wrap up with today get up high and be a threat just be a threat. Just make him go faster, right? Whether that's getting up high or you could kind of run into the back of him down low if you want, but anything that makes him go faster because the faster he goes, the more tired he will be for the end and the more, you know, draft you get. What's the goal from the front? Goal from the front would be to not let them get underneath. and Not let sure them get underneath. Make sure that I'm blocking that pathway. Um, yeah. And what's the, what's the goal from the back again? From the back is to be a threat. And what is being a threat do to them? Makes them go faster and tire Got themselves. It. So if the goal for the person in the back is to make the one in the front go faster, what's the goal for the guy in front? Save as much energy as you can. So to go slower. So you want to go slower, obviously, without just getting straight up past. So it's like, how do you manipulate your race? How do you play your chess pieces 
so that you can make the whole thing go slower until you decide to attack. So if I'm in the, say I race this guy again next time. We're, yes. we're racing next month. We're doing match sprints. So say yes. I race him next time and I start, um, I'm in the front right here and say I'm down low and I'm trying to control it from down low. Yes. He jumps up top and he's a threat and I don't speed up that much. I, would it be smart to just kind of be at the same kind, just a wheel ahead of him maybe, but just like, that would only be if you're up at the rail with him to be just a wheel ahead of him to elbow to elbow, hip to hip, you know, being, being up at the rail with him. If you're down low and he's up high, speed up so that he has to come back down. Okay. And then once he comes back down, he's not a threat anymore. So you can ease up a little bit. Okay. Because, you know, as much as he thinks he pushed you on, you could speed up to pull him down. If I'm riding at the bottom of the track and you're at the top of the track and we just start riding casually and I say the rules are you have to stay up there, I have to stay down here. If I start speeding up, there's going to come a point where you just can't keep up with me anymore. And you're going to have to come down the track just to stay with me. So if you speed up, that will pull them off the rail. How fast they come off the rail really depends. If he flies down at you like a flying 200, well, it's a good thing you're going fast because he's going to be coming fast. Um, if he comes down casually, and this is why we're looking, then you can back off a little bit. That doesn't mean go from 80% to 0%, but it means 80% to 75 to 70, be observing. You know, was he coming off the rail to attack me right away? Or was he just scared of getting left behind and he came down? If he's scared of getting left behind or he was threatened, he'll come down. You slow down. He's like, huh, I'm comfortable again. Great. And then you stay in the front and he's back there and he's riding your pace. And your pace is I want to go slow until it's too late for him to accelerate and win. And you've seen a lot of these races where people don't even really accelerate until like a half a lap to go, sometimes even a quarter of a lap to go. And then they'll just try yeah. and sprint. It almost always works out better for the person that sprints first. Almost always. So if you're in the front and you can keep it slow and you're watching him, if he speeds up, you speed up so he can't pass. If he slows down, you slow down so that you save energy. You only use as much energy as it takes to stay in front. And then when you decide to sprint, you sprint and it's whoever has, whoever went first and whoever has the better acceleration, you're probably equally as strong as each other. You'll probably win. So main components are uh, be in control. Um, yes. conserve energy um, especially from the front and from the back be a threat yeah we're going to do that one last time it'll take 20 seconds you're in the back what's the goal put the pressure on jump how up, do you put pressure it, on be a threat make, do whatever you got to do to make him speed up whether it's jump up a little bit or give him body language that you're about to start speeding up speed and if we up jump up the track how hard do we go Anytime hard. we go up the track, how hard do we go? Hard, so that it forces them to go hard. Perfect. Also. Got Keep it. it. Um, and then if they speed up, what do we do? Drop back down. Got it. Take Why? The Take the draft because you just made him. Got it. You, get, he, you just forced, tricked him into giving you a free draft. Got it. Perfect. You made um, him speed up for you to give you the draft and used perfect. it to your own advantage. Then you come back down the track and he slows down. What do you do? Slow down too. You, you speed him back up. If you slow down because he slowed down, now he's in control. Yeah, so, so well, I was thinking if I'm right behind him, I would have to slow down, but then... Go right back up. Yeah, go, just go if right back If you come down and he slows down, go back up. So just keep going back up, keep putting the pressure on. Yeah, eventually he's going to not even know where to look. Is that, is that like the universal, uh, uh, you know, language of a threat for track is just moving up to the top? All that's, that's it. That's anything, what's every time. Try, like anything that seems like they're trying to pass you. And if someone's riding at the bottom of the track, going up is the only way to pass. You only got one way to pass. You know, of course the threat, if they're riding around in the middle of the track, which I would not recommend for someone that's not an expert, um, you could fake diving down the track that could push them on. But at that point, why fake going underneath them? Why not just actually go underneath them? Why not just, if they're giving you a shortcut to the front, why not just take the shortcut and then decide what you want to do with it at that point? If they are the type of person that lets you go underneath them in a race without really knowing what they were doing, then 
it's probably the type of person you would want to take the front from. They're, it's, they're, not, they're probably not setting you up for like a big, complex, tactical battle. They probably just didn't know they shouldn't ride in the middle of the track and you just took a shortcut. At the national level? At the state level. State level? There might right. be some people at the national well, level that will- The top uh, tier riders at the national level- That will, will try maybe. and bait. Yes, 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 yes. There are, yeah. there are some reasons why maybe you would ride in the middle of the track, but not for you right now. I wouldn't do that to someone like Sandor or a person like Rex or, you know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. One of the people that knows what they're doing. I wouldn't. Uh, cool. Any questions? Uh, nothing really. I mean, we covered everything. So as far as everything we were talking about with tactics and. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So watch some videos and try and figure out why they're doing what they're doing. Watch one video completely as the guy in the back. Imagine you're the guy in the back. Why is he doing what he's doing or why is he not doing what you think he should be doing? take those notes then maybe watch it again from the front or watch a different video from the front you know try and make those decisions take some notes um you know let me know i'll take a look at them all right cool yeah talk to you later bud good time yeah you too man thanks a lot and uh we'll definitely be in touch and i'll let you know in the next races and i'll send you some film and uh if there's anything in between now and then i'll definitely bring it to your attention man 100 so, yeah, percent. yeah man, take some cool. videos on the next one and let me see how it goes you rock talk to you later all right, man. I'll see you.